Put your left hand on the Bible. Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Paige Gebhardt Cognetti. I, Paige Gebhardt Cognetti. Do solemnly affirm do so. that I will support, obey, and defend the Constitution of the United States. Do solemnly affirm that I will support, obey, and defend the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of this Commonwealth. And the, and the <coughs> Constitution of this Commonwealth. And that I will discharge the duties of my office with fidelity. And that I will discharge the duties of my office with fidelity. Congratulations. Wow. Thank you all so very much for being here today. It is just tremendous to look out into this crowd and behind me and see so many friends and family and supporters, people that I've known for a very long time, people that I've known for just a short amount of time. Um, thank you, Representative Kozarowski, for being my MC today. Um, Representative Kozarowski is, a, is a, a longtime family friend of my husband's family, so it's extra special for us. Um, to be able to, to be working together here, here today and moving forward. Um, I want to thank my family and friends that are here with me, whether in the room or watching on the live stream um, in Scranton, across the world, across the country. Um, I'm deeply, deeply proud of the, the, the people that I have in my life that keep me going. Many of you are here today and many of you are watching, so hello. Um, my parents, Rob and Linda, are here with me on stage this afternoon. Um, they have loved me unconditionally through every trial and triumph in my life um, and have already proven to be um, the most devoted grandparents, I believe, on the planet. Um, <laughs> my brother could not be here today, but he's cheering me on from Colorado, um, as he has been for our entire lives. Uh, my brothers and sisters-in-law, my nieces and nephews are here with me, us today. You met them when they did the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, they, they keep us laughing, and I'm just honored that you guys are all here. I have a special message um, of gratitude to my daughter. Um, my heart still skips a beat when I say that. Um, it's only two weeks. <laughs> Um, she's already a team player. She is sacrificing time and attention for me to be able to take on this great responsibility, and I am already um, indebted to her for that. Um, and of course, thank you to my husband, Ryan, whose humor, insight, advice, speech writing help, and love sustain me throughout every day, um, and now through the very long nights with a newborn. <laughs> Uh, I want to congratulate the new members of City Council sworn in just an hour ago and new Council President Bill Gahan. Um, congratulations to Scranton's newly installed controller, John Murray. I am looking forward to working with all of you um, and I'm very excited about the work we have ahead. I'm excited to see so many city employees here today from longtime veterans of City Hall to the new hires that, that I've brought on. I'm honored to begin my tenure with you all uh, and wanted to give a special thanks to Paulo Hora and Tom Oleski and the whole maintenance team for making the city, the city hall just shine today. I really deeply appreciate all the preparation that they did. Uh, Mayor Evans, thank you for all the hard work that you have done. Nancy, for, for helping him do the hard work in these last six months. Um, taking the helm from you is far less daunting than it would have been otherwise. Uh, I'm pleased to have many Scranton School Board members here today, um, including, of course, new board president Katie Gilmartin. I'm in very encouraged by the leadership in the Scranton School District and know that from now on the city and the district can make a lot of strides together. Thank you to the legislators, the judges, the elected officials that we have with, here, with us here today. Um, I know you have very busy schedules and I really appreciate you being here for Scranton. Uh, special thanks to Congressman Chris Carney, who in 2005, decided to bravely take on an incumbent in a very difficult district and at the same time took on a young staffer from across the country who had no political experience whatsoever. <laughs> In Scranton, family comes first. Commitment to family and pride in family and community traditions define this city and leave a lasting impression on visitors. Scranton may be one of the last cities in America that remain built on generations of families living side by side, where people give directions using landmarks long since changed. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. These are the changes, these are things that we love about Scranton. Beyond these unifying elements, however, there are significant divides. There are political divides, economic divides, racial divides. Decades of economic challenges, some specific to Scranton, others symptomatic of regional, national, and global trends, have reduced economic opportunity for some families. 
Economic uncertainty can breed fear, anger, and resentment. It can drive wedges in, in communities and block progress on projects large and small. Given the tremendous challenges that Scranton has ahead, we cannot afford to be divided. We cannot afford to act as though our problems begin and end at the city's borders. The health of our region is inextricably linked to Scranton's success, and the city's success depends on the progress of Northeastern Pennsylvania as a whole. In my conversations in the years I've lived here, there seems to be a nearly universal belief that we need change in order to realize a brighter future for Scranton. We must then truly embrace change, even when it feels difficult. We must also work together as a community to confront our problems and seek solutions with open, mind and open minds and without fear. Scranton residents and taxpayers deserve a government that works for them. We need, and you deserve, a city government that provides the services we need and the structures and vision that lead to economic growth and opportunity. You deserve a city government that is proactive in communicating with the people and the media, led by people who understand that information from government institutions is not a privilege, but a right. You deserve a city government that invests in the tools necessary to perform well and meet the needs of as many residents as possible. You deserve a city government that we can count on to provide for the public safety, plan for the worst, and take care of us when crisis hits. You deserve a city government with leaders that honor the past while looking to the future, meet you where you are, listen to you, and work to solve your problems. My goal as your mayor is to lead on these principles each and every day. My administration will work with government, community, and business leaders locally and outside of the region to kickstart funding for a range of pro projects. During my transition, we reached out to Governor Wolf, who well understands the fiscal challenges that smaller Pennsylvania cities face. Today, it's my pleasure to announce that we've had some success. T Governor Tom Wolf's Department of Economic and Community Development has awarded Scranton with an initial grant of $100,000 for technology upgrades and improvements to the city's public safety infrastructure. I very much look forward to working with him and the Commonwealth to build on this initial grant and find other revenue uh, that we, we do badly need here in Scranton. The challenges that Scranton must now confront did not develop overnight. We will not solve them overnight. The culture around local government in this area has enabled some bad actors to degrade Scranton's reputation. We will have to endure continued references to past events, but it is up to us how we react. It is up to us to shift our practices and our culture. The future is up to us. If we nurture what we have in Scranton and tackle our problems head on, the future of Scranton is indeed bright. Achieving this brighter future is not something the mayor can do alone. The checks and balances built into the city's governance are vital, and I'm grateful to be sworn in today along with such skilled and motivated city council members and such an experienced new controller. Thank you all for stepping up to help your city. To our community, to our neighbors, we know that you are ready for change. We need your help to achieve it, though. We need your ideas, your messages of encouragement. We need you to invest in your homes and expand your businesses. We need you to support, to provide hands-on support in the form of everything from park cleanups to tutoring children in your neighborhood to volunteering at any number of our incredible nonprofit organizations in the area. We look forward to working for you and with you. To the Scranton natives across the country who care about their home city, please come see what we've done, what we're trying to do, and consider how you can be part of Scranton's brighter future. In the spirit of this cooperation and action, in lieu of an inaugural party, we are organizing a Mayor's Day of Action to be held in February. We will be asking the community to come together and volunteer that day, and of course moving forward, with a focus on preparing for a successful 2020 census. If we can get as many census volunteers as we have people gathered in this room, we will be off to a great start and hopefully can get a full count. We'll have more information about that in the coming weeks. The overriding goal of my administration is to bring certainty back to Scranton. If our residents feel uncertain or uneasy about the city's future, we will not be able to reach our goals. We will be methodical, analytical, and do all we can to make the right decisions in this building. Building a stronger administrative foundation in the city is essential to correcting all of the problems we have and achieving broader success. In The Federalist, Alexander Hamilton warned that a dangerous ambition more often lurks behind the specious mask of zeal for the rights of the people than under the forbidding appearance of zeal for the firmness and efficiency of government. 
Firm and efficient government is not the stuff of punchy headlines. The process, the processes that we are going to undertake here in City Hall may often seem unremarkable. They might often seem boring. And we, as we embark on them, we ask for your patience. It will not be easy, good things rarely are, and will not be quick, but we need the time, and again, ask for your patience as we try to do this. Together we can achieve more than we imagine is possible. I'm honored to take this oath today and commit to being a leader whose mind is open to big, audacious ideas, whose ears are open and listening to your concerns, whose door to City Hall is, also, is always open, but who also brings City Hall to you and to the community. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for your confidence. And thank you for your commitment to Scranton. Please drive home safely in the snow. Thank you.